this on you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I have a word, never mind. I'm going to be good. Pastor, thank you. <laughs> this is not, this is um, a difficult thing to say. Um, and so Pastor left it for me to say, but I will be leaving the area. And so I want him to do the initial thing. He said, mm -mm. <laughs> He said, no, you got it. <laughs> you know how I say God's got it? Well, God does have it. And, and one of the things that um, I always say, which I always mean, is that God's got it. And I don't do anything, uh, make any decisions without praying about it. And just to make sure, I had backup prayer. <laughs> I, had, I had three come in and do backup prayer just in case I didn't hear God right. So I am laughing because since the backup prayer, I've been blessed even more. So I thank, I thank Pastor and First Lady and my uh, bestie over there, Yolanda, for their backup prayer because um, I'm going to be going to Vermont. My oldest son and um, his wife and three kids are in Vermont. And Sapa Jeannie and my girl are right there. <laughs> and, and three of my grandkids are there. And I have um, two sons here and three grandkids, four grandkids here. But um, I've decided that I want to go, I need a change. And I want to be closer to that son and those grandkids because since they moved there, I haven't seen them in over a year. And um, I just said, well, I prayed about it. And I always tell people when I pray about something, I wait. Remember, and, and I preached about that because you got to pray about it. But once you pray about it and you say, God, what is the best thing, then you also have to wait for God to answer you. Because a lot of times we pray about stuff, and if God doesn't answer us fast enough, we say, oh, I guess it's on us. So we make a decision, and it might not be the right decision. So I prayed about it. I waited. And anybody that knows me for any length of time knows that once... God gives me the okay, things move. Boom, 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 boom. So things have been moving. Unfortunately, this is my last Sunday here. I could not tell you last week because I wanted Pastor and First Lady to be here. So I haven't even posted it on Facebook, which is a big deal for me, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so I just didn't want a couple of people to know, and I wanted to tell you all together. One thing I've told you many times, I tell you every time I'm here preaching, is that I love you all. I love this church. I love this church. I tell everybody how welcoming and loving and you know we're human we talked about that last week too but that we're human so we go through silly little things but down deep this church you know it it's a beautiful place number one but the thing that's important is has beautiful people that have taken my heart i've been here for more than three almost going on three and a half years now and known pastor for over 27 years and so, you know, I have a little sad, not, I have a lot of sadness, but I have a tremendous amount of gladness because my grandkids are over the moon because I'm going to be there. And I've already, thank you. I've already found a place to live. And the last blessing, and which again, I'm going to thank you all for the special prayer because they were praying, and I, and I said, Pastor, now you can't pray for what you want. You have to pray and say, if it's not men, he said, well, if it's not men, just let us know. I said, don't make me sick or nothing so I can't go to where. But the last um, blessing is I haven't had a car since last December because I just couldn't afford it. 
And so I've been taking the bus and walking, which I like, I like walking, and taking the bus is very interesting in Wilkesbury. <laughs> but the, the last blessing that I got is that somebody close to my family is actually giving me a Nissan Pathfinder. after a sermon because I don't want y'all to be distracted but that's okay. <laughs> I love you. Thank you pastor. I love you. You know I do. Thank you first lady. We are, we have two boxes that are still going to Zambia because I don't neglect what I say. You know what we're going to do and pastor and I have always already talked about it and we're going to keep in contact about that. So uh, that was hard for me, too, because usually when I make a commitment about something, I just, I have to follow it through. But this is, you know, God approved, and I'm at peace about it, I'm happy about it, and thank you all for being so loving and so welcoming. God bless. say anything because if I said anything at all it would have told you exactly what she was doing and I didn't want to give that up to you we have been holding this for probably two weeks now because she told us about two weeks ago and I didn't want her to say anything last week because I wasn't here we wouldn't be here but I wanted to be here on the Sunday that she uh, shared this with the church she's given so much uh, to the church you know one of the things I often say is she's not just a friend uh, our friend First Lady now, she's the church's friend. Amen. I've had three and a half years almost uh, opportunity to be her pastor. And she has allowed me to be able to call on her to preach here. Amen. And I've not just done it when I needed her, but even when I knew that there was a Sunday where I can just, listen, why don't you do this Sunday for me? Because I don't want her and anyone ever to think that I'm in the business of using people. I, I like when God calls them and God uses us where he pleases. Amen? Amen. And she has been a wonderful friend. Our friendship spans, man, the choir at Mount Zion. You name it, she knows so much about me uh, that I, I just, I don't cringe. I just go to laughing because we just cut up in choir rehearsal. And our choir rehearsals lasted till sometimes 11 p.m. And I wouldn't lie to you. And uh, uh, one thing I will say before we walk down is we were at a concert at King's College. And Dr. Newsom had us up on the uh, area to sing. And we had uh, played around the, the guys there the night before. And the opening of the song, you had to hit it on a certain note in order to go further. And he looked at us, and Dr. Newsom was famous for this. So we're looking at him. He hits the note again. We sing it wrong. He said, touch the note, bro. Right. He hits it again, it doesn't work. He, Got up from the piano, came over, and he said it so that we would hear it, but everybody else heard it. Had you not been playing around when he got it right, I don't care if we do it 20 times, you will get it right, you will sing the song right. He got on that piano, and we hit the right chord the next time. So things like that that we have been through, and, and Reverend Brittingham, Reverend Dr. Sharon Brittingham, I am going to miss you. First Lady and I will. We so much appreciate you. There's more to come. But we appreciate you. We love you. So I want you to walk on down with us, First Lady. Won't you come? While everybody's still standing. You think you're leaving us, but we're going with you. Here's your church for your desktop. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it too so much.
It is now time for our uh, tithes and offerings. Please give accordingly. Thank you. things that I think about often is, and we were laughing a little bit because you were saying that you had prayed about it, and I said, here we go. She came in the office, I'm, and I'm looking at her, she's looking at me, I said, I can't believe you just told me you're leaving. No. You got to be kidding me. No, that's not right. <laughs> yes, <it is>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I did. Well, I was coming with that. I said, you ain't going nowhere. I said, we're going to pray to God that maybe you heard something you shouldn't have heard. <laughs> so, uh, but I remember um, our coming often and just being a part of uh, our communion and just uh, loving God, uh, loving to preach. Um, once a month, uh, she would go to a church and preach there. And it's encouraging to have a fellow yoke person with you that labors in the Lord and really loves God. Amen. And that at any moment doesn't matter. I think one of the memories that I always have is when uh, I got news that Sunday morning while we were at church that my uncle had passed away. And First Lady and I were downstairs and I'm thinking, she said, well, who are you gonna get to preach? I said, well, I'm just gonna ask them to sing songs and read scripture. And she said, hey, she said, Sister Brittingham is here right now. I said, thank God. She went out there and asked her, and believe it or not, God had already talked to her about something that she was supposed to preach that Sunday. That's what I'm saying. God is in the midst of all of this. Yeah, yeah. So one of the songs, and help me out, I'm going to try to get through this song. Don't even look my way. Look another way, Reverend Brittingham. <laughs> Jesus keeps me near. The cross, there's a precious fountain free to all a
Mount Zion, I had professed that to my pastor in New Jersey that God had called me, you know the story, yes. to the ministry. And she said that God had not told her, so she wasn't going to do anything to help me. And I was crushed for a few years because I knew God had called me from a child. And when I came to Mount, I, when I came to Wilkesbury, excuse me, in 1990, Mount Zion was being redone, and so they were having church over at Bethel. So they had Bethel members, they had Mount Zion members, Mount Zion, and I don't know if you remember this pastor, but um, uh, Al Walker was. Uh, making announcements and stuff. He said, well, we don't have any choir members here today, so we won't have any music. And I sent up a note and I said, I'll sing. So I sang, <laughs> I sang, and then I was listening to service and everything, and I knew that I wanted to be with Mount Zion, even though I was in Bethel. And I also knew that I wanted to be with the choir, because they come after you. As soon as you say you want to be, they'll, they'll be after you. You want to be an usher, you want to be this, you want to be I said, no, I know. I walked right up to Dr. Newsom and I said, I want to do a choir that day. And so when I went to pastor and I told him the story that I had been called to ministry, he said, I got you. And he taught me. The deacons made me wait a year. <laughs> and that was okay. That was a good thing. That was a really good thing. Amen. Because it makes you really think about everything. It makes you pray about everything more. And when I did my trial sermon, it was a path to healing. And the path you've already covered her with and what you've been down her with but today we join in love for her to encourage her let your presence be on her where she goes let it all be good let it work together for good bless her family let the finances come everything oh, that they need you're going to make it happen in Jesus name Amen, Amen. 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 Amen.